In this short demonstration, I want to just go over the principle of uh, creating a turn up at the bottom of a trouser leg. Um, doesn't have to be at the bottom of a trouser leg, it could be wherever you like. And again, this is one principle, one way of making a pattern for that. There are other ways, um, all depending probably what's best for your design and what's best for your fabric. Um, I just want to say, again with a trouser, we're working square again. So where you have the grain line running down the front of the trouser leg or running down the back of the trouser leg. If I put my set square on the grain and draw a line, that needs to be squared up with the crutch. So just like in a sleeve, when we squared up for the underarm, in the trouser, you need to make sure your trousers sit square, like two tubes going down the leg, and that it's squared up. So here's the notches, which are balanced notches, and the line, if I square up to the grain on the front leg, the line sits so far below the, the notch. If I square up on the back grain line, it should be the same. And I'll just check the inside leg, those lines should also meet. So we're working square. Now what I've done for this demonstration is I've just copied off the front leg, the bottom of the front leg. I don't want to uh, waste paper and I can't fit it into the screen, the whole trouser leg. So I've just copied off the bottom of the trouser leg for the front and that's on that piece of paper and I've copied off the trouser leg of the back onto this piece of paper. I've drawn in the grain lines and I've written here that this is the outer leg seam and this is the inner leg seam. So if I was to join that together and then join these together, I would end up with a, a tube, the trouser leg. So, a turn up. Well, first of all, you want to think of the depth of your turn up. So again, depending on your fabric and your design. This is the finished length of the trouser. I'm going to put a turn up on this trouser of let's say four centimeters. So there's my four centimeters. I'm going to do that again and I'll show you why. Because if that's the finished hem length, this line here, let me just go over that in biro so it shows up clearly. I've no seams on here at the moment, so I've literally copied off the block shape again. So this is the finished hem. I'll call it the finished hem length. Now, if I'm doing a turn up, My fabric is going to come up. And then my fabric is going to come back down. So I'm literally folding the, back, uh, the paper, my pattern. And in here, here's my turn up. Now, this line, it's like a pleat. This line has fallen on my finished hem length. But now what do I do? Because I, I need to finish off this nice and neat. Well, normally, this comes up again. It folds up again behind and inside the trouser leg. So it finishes like that. And there's, there's the turn-up. This is the simplest way of doing a turn-up. 
as I say, there are other ways. So now I'm going to do a hem of about two point five, I would say, and then I'm going to put a seam allowance of one centimeter. So I've done four centimeters, four centimeters. That's the depth of the turn up, and then I've done a hem. Um, was that three? Oh, 2.5. Now I've done 2.5 hem and a one centimeter um, seam. Now, what I'm suggesting is you don't cut down straight like this. I'm first of all going to cut off my pattern at the correct length I now want it. To get rid of that, fold up, fold down, turn the hem in. There's my trouser leg. Here's the hem. And I'll show you that bit in a minute. I just want to now add, with my paper folded, I want to add a seam allowance, one here. I want to add a seam allowance on my outer leg. Now I'm going to cut my pattern. While the paper is still folded, And that's the shape I get. So you can see that this isn't straight. This shape here goes in and out. And this isn't straight either because it needs to follow that angle that the leg's coming in. Actually, if I make this sharper, if I make that a much sharper, coming in much narrower, at the hem of my trouser, just as an illustration. Say I make my trouser leg come in much sharper like that. And I will add a seam allowance to that. Say my trouser leg comes in sharp. The sharper the angle, whether it be on the cuff of a sleeve, hem of a skirt, a trouser leg, the more shaping I get. Now, when I turn this over and turn that up, this is a raw edge of fabric. So that would get turned in as if you were hemming anything else as well. And you would stitch here if you were sewing this. And that stitch line would come through here. Once the turn up is pressed up, you don't see that stitch line, it's well hidden inside the turn up. And then to keep the turn up staying there in position, you can just do a little stitch in the ditch or catch it by hand at either seam. And that's how you'd make a pattern for a turn up. I would do exactly the same on the back leg and then I would put the two legs together to make sure they matched and I would notch. I would notch where I need to fold my fabric up. I would notch where I need to fold my fabric back down and I would notch where I need to turn back the hem. Likewise on this side. So you notch where you fold the turn up, notch where you fold it back down, and notch the hem. And as you sew, 
it would be very important to turn here and get these angles. If you don't get those angles, the turn up will not sit nice and flat. There is a risk of the turn up being too tight and then gathering or puckering would occur on your trouser leg because the turn up's too tight for where it falls. And that's how you make a turn up for your pattern. It's very similar to when you do pleating. Always fold your paper if you're doing pleating, then cut your pattern. And when you open it up, you will get some strange shapes going on. And those strange shapes are important.